All right, YouTubers. This is an FPV people. I need to stop saying that. I'm sorry. Uh, hello, people. How are you? Benjamin here. Hey, uh, I maybe this is part three. Um, I don't know. Anyway, let's get right to it. So, <clears throat> I'm continuing my adventures of building an antenna for 1.2 gigahertz. I, um, what I did was I measured the disc. This is a, boy, that looks like an incredible size difference. This one is about two and a quarter inches uh, in radius, um, or about four and a half in diameter each. This one is right around three. Uh, I think I measured it one and a half or inches for the radius. I changed to a SMA connector and I'm using a smaller piece of wire. And um, anyways, that's what I did, which I kind of like it a little smaller. So here's what I'm doing. Um, if you have old analog bag phones laying around, I have not find it. I've not found the ones in the Motorola ones. I'll look maybe, uh, but I can tell you that the older Toshiba microphones. I'm sorry, the Toshiba cell phones, the uh, Radio Shack bag phones. They have some parts they are easy to figure out. Unfortunately, of course, with cell phones, given they were in the day and age of non-internet, so their stuff has not been published. And if you can find it, I'd love to have some of that, especially for the common Radio Shack bag phone they have. If you have schematics or something, that would be awesome. Got a lot of good parts, and the screen's useful. Anyway, so here's what I did. Yeah, I was playing with this one yesterday, but as I saw, as, as I told you, RF was leaking out everywhere. And I wasn't quite sure of the measurement. Um, I knew this uh, 1N82A uh, microwave detector mixer diode was fine. But like I said, it was just sticking in there and it was loose and things. And it just didn't, just wasn't very good. And I think there was actually too much uh, coupling. Uh, it only had minus 10 dB. So that uh, might have been throwing off some issues. So... <clears throat> Here's the Radio Shack bag phone. This is the coupler from here. This is the this is the coupler circuit. Let's see if this trick works. Oh yes, it does. So that's it right there. So what I did was I soldered a wire from another bag phone onto the pass through part. This piece is the pass through. This one right here, I can't do this like some people can. And then I soldered a piece of uh, UT141-50. It's 50 ohm uh, semi-rigid coax. It has a uh, a uh, permanent one-time SMA connector on there. I just did that for testing. And then it's in reverse direction. So what that means is that it's passing through and then it's measuring power reflected back. And that's that's what this is on, on the cell phone is for. And it's connected to an op-amp. So it goes through this uh, a BAT-54 diode. And the output of this diode goes into to an op amp, so that way it'll regulate or scale back the power to the amplifier in the event there's a high SWR. Now, um, yeah, that's right. Just goes, oops. So there's some other phones you can see, and you can I'll, I'll show you some other examples of what they may look like. They may not always be straight or look just like that, but they're going to be round about the same configuration when you find them. See. So this one is from an, a much older cell phone, probably in the late 90s, if not, or, uh, uh, yeah, late 90s. Uh, matter of fact, there was a date on some of these. Uh, oh, 1989. So there you have it. Anyway, this one here, where the uh, uh, module, and the, this is where this uh, connected right from the uh duplexer which was a big burly thing but on this one the rf the oh geez the rf from the pa comes here it goes through a uh, a uh, just a little coupling capacitor little tuning network here and then here's the main strip and then this is the coupling strip right here and then here's the resistor to ground let's see if i can't get that light out of the way there's there's the resistor and then this right here is where it feeds into it, to its diode. This one actually has a whole bunch. I don't know what these are, are for, but like I said, this is uh, it's an older one. But this one's kind of neat because of this little thing right here. This is called a pill. It's an MMIC. It's a receiver preamp. So you can actually take that off, or you can be smart 
and just cut out the circuit and use it as is and all you got to do is just supply I think it was 8 volts was the main board let me show you some other ones give you some other different examples here's one from I think this was from a this was from an NEC cell phone yeah I know a much much older one I don't know what year this one is but definitely old um, the filters on top aren't any good but here's a TNC connector you can use that and there it is right there same setup just like that see the the, uh, the thicker uh, the thicker strip line is the feed and then the smaller skinnier one which doesn't necessarily which which is also 50 uh, whatever anyways that's also a feedback circuit and one more I'll show you which is a little bit harder to find was this one right here this one now you can tell it's it's it has more coupling or there's a lot less um, yeah there's, it has more coupling when, when the trace when the strip line is, is closer together I'm sorry this is boring but um, you know there's I don't know have a way to measure it and then when you want to test it all you have to do is just take your multimeter and find the diode and which it is like I said it's going to be an SO23 type package and this one I found was a was a bat 54p and pin th uh, whatever, whatever this pin doesn't work but this one does and this is where I got the voltage so hold on here unless I blew something up or I destroyed it it's possible left it on oh now the transmitter, according to this one right here, the forward voltage is 0.156 volts, and the reflected voltage is 0 0.09. So that means my SWR is about 1.1.3 uh, to 1 or less. I'm very pleased. Anyways, if you have any questions, please ask. I will try to help you. Thanks.